have a Dell reading. Hey, Brian. How are you? Hi, Haley. Good, Haley, and you? I'm well, thank you. You mentioned you had a Dow reading to start us off today. Would you like that? Yes, let's go for it. I'm sure it will somehow synchronize with everything else going on. I bet it does. Um, and uh, you know that Ray and I read the Dow every morning. Um, this is number 48 uh, from uh, Stephen Mitchell's translation of the Dow. There are different translations. And for those of uh, who are listening, um, the Dao, T-A-O, and then T-E, and then C-H-I-N-G, Tao Te Ching. There are 81 passages written over 2,500 years ago by a contemporary of Confucius. No one knows for sure the author. Um, the name given is Lao Tzu, but um, uh, we find them really helpful. Mm -hmm. uh, in, the, in the pursuit of knowledge, Every day something is added. In the practice of the Tao, every day something is dropped. Less and less do you need to force things until finally you arrive at non-action. When nothing is done, nothing is left undone. True mastery can be gained by letting things go their own way. It can't be gained by interfering. What do you think of that? I think it's entirely apt for <laughs> now. <laughs> Good. I think Tell it's, me very, how. it's very, um, I, you know, part of that too is just allowing and being open to the right message coming at the right time, the right action coming at the right time. And I think, you know, you reading that this morning is very, appropriate and it does completely sink into you know where i am but also how i see where the world is right now what are it your is. thoughts on it well i i want you if you would uh say more for instance um uh in knowledge every day something is added in the practice of the Tao, everything every day something is dropped what what do you what does that mean to you uh that's balance uh-huh and I think, you know, every single moment we are offered the opportunity to learn and to let go of things that we don't need. Yeah, I think I think it's for me, it's letting go of preconceived notions. Yeah. You know, we all have a story that we have told about ourselves, about our parents, about our siblings, about jobs. We've told them over and over and over again, like a record that, you know, has grooves in it from the retelling and i think that uh the Tao invites us to let go of it you know say you know let's take another look at at who they were who they are who you are what you were taught and i think you know for me it's the the this cycle of learning that we're on we're constantly learning we're you know and if you want to and if you make the choice you can be on a path that is constantly learning so there are preconceived notions based on information that you learned at a specific point in time. But as you continue learning, you get better information. You're able to use it in a better way. So that's sort of the dropping of that Tao that it was appropriate and necessary for a specific instance and sort of upgrading to a new Tao, mm -hmm. a new practice. Um, and I think, you know, part of that openness, part of the learning is being kind to yourself. And when you have the awareness that you have a perception that perhaps no longer serves you, being able to let go of it with kindness, it served you, it had mm -hmm. a purpose. Rather than I feel like, and I see a lot today that we get really hard on ourselves for having wrong thoughts and mm -hmm. wrong actions. And especially uh, if I can segue uh, into COVID and the impact COVID is having on us without us really being aware of it. And in some ways we're like the frog in the water that's getting warmer. Um, you know, we, I spoke with a really good friend yesterday who confessed that her feelings are right at skin level, you know, that she has less ability 
to manage not saying things that strike her or honking the horn. You know, that's an example she gave with me. She doesn't like doing it, but she finds herself um, uh, more often doing it. And, and I said, I thought that a lot of that, if I could identify with it, was because of the impact of COVID. I'm not exactly sure what all of the elements are, but you and I've talked about the anxiety and depression that a lot of people have experienced as a result of uh, COVID containment. I, for me, COVID isn't just the virus. COVID is this time that we're in. And, you know, it, was, it is because of this virus, perhaps, that we find ourselves in this time where it's now going into, you know, the end of 2021. We'll be, we're coming up on almost two years of living in this new COVID world. Um, it is an incredibly adaptive world. And I think it's very much like the passage you wrote, like we're continually learning. We're continually being offered moments to look in the mirror and say, can you be better? Can you know more? Um, and I, it's, you know, again, we always have the choice to determine and discern for ourselves what it is we want to do. And I realize with that, with the mental health of COVID and the exhaustion that comes with COVID, whether it's the containment, the changing rules all the time, the changing polarizations all the time, it comes with exhaustion. So we're not always in the best energy. Sometimes we don't always have the energy to look at ourselves in the mirror and say, how can I be better today? Sometimes we just lose it and we're just like, blah. <laughs> Mm -hmm. um, for me, what I am very focused on right now and what I'm very much trying to be aware of and trying to do is to meet those moments and those people with patience and love. And it's, it's, an, it's a fine line because patience and love doesn't mean that I let you puke all over me. <laughs> it means that there's a boundary. But once the boundary has been put in place, there is no more anger. There is no more hurt feelings. It's just respect my boundary. Let's calm down. Well, that works if they're willing to listen. But uh, listen, uh, listen to the last uh, segment of this. What I what I read, if you would, uh, and apply it to what we just you just said. True mastery can be gained by letting things go their own way. It can't be gained by interfering. And um, what, what that, the thought that brings up for me is that um, often I want, I so want to help people. Yeah. That I, I want to step in always to say, oh, there's a better way to peel that potato. There's a better way to cook that salmon. Uh, there's a better way to be in a relationship. There's a better way. And there's and a better way for you to be better. <laughs> yeah, like me. <laughs> <laughs> and what one of the things that I've one of the things that I've uh, become more and more aware of as I age is that, you know, pe people will hear it when they're ready. But if they're not ready, you're an annoyance. You know, you're and I think like trying to teach it. They yeah. say it's like trying to it's like trying to teach a pig to sing, you know. You're wasting your time, and it annoys the pig. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, that very much resonates with me because <clears throat> I do consider myself a healer, and I do, you know, encounter people where I'm just like, oh, if you would just let me help you. <laughs> and it has been a message this week for me, sort of a key reminder that you can only help those that ask that ask for the advice, that ask for your opinion. Otherwise it is, you know, you're, no, you're not being a teacher, you're not being a wise person by just, again, puking what mm -hmm. you think onto them. Um, a part of that verse that you read was sort of, the master kind of is in the flow, is not attached and lets things be. Um, and I think that's an important lesson here is that when people aren't 
inner space to listen as much as we think we would be the perfect teacher. Um, being able to recognize that and being able to let them go with love rather than sending them off well they don't know what they're talking about and oh my god you know sending them off with those feelings of anger and resentment send them off with love and you know know that at some point whatever's meant for them will come and may it be received in love and light and live with the fear that they will say to you why didn't you warn me no. <laughs> i um i'm totally okay with that these days <laughs> My, you know, I'm, I'm, I feel that I'm far better now at receiving those comments. And if you knew, why didn't you tell me? Because I can relax into that space of you weren't ready to listen. It would have, it didn't mean anything. And I did try and offer you a moment to speak. Where I find myself more triggered is stopping myself at that mm -hmm. point in time because you do it i think you have this capability too where you can kind of see into what their next steps are and i'm just like there's such an easier way for you to do this <laughs> and i have to remember that it's not appropriate it's not necessary for me to go into a full session when they haven't even asked for one they're mm -hmm. not even prepared for it um and I also, you know, that's my learning to practice the master to let go, mm -hmm. to let go. It's, you know, it is my ego at that point saying I'm the one with the information. Haley, it gets worse. It gets harder, not worse. It gets harder when you get older. Um, oh, <laughs> it, it does, because when you're older uh, and you know from your life experiences that what you have embraced uh, works uh, in creating joy and serenity. And, but uh, when a younger person doesn't f take interest in it, it's hard not to personalize it as I'm on a shelf and I don't have value anymore. You know, before you could say, well, you know, you're pretty to yourself you're pretty stupid because people are paying me big bucks to hear this stuff. <laughs> but when you're not making the big bucks anymore in telling people things uh, and people don't really want to hear what you have to say, it's hard not to personalize it and, and, and have the ego get involved thinking, well, oh, wait a second, you know, I'm not done yet. I'm not. <laughs> That's why I, I really encourage, um, you know, older people to focus on issues facing older people because uh, we're particularly equipped to do it and we're not in the way of younger people who want to address other issues. I, I think it's really important that we are a multi-dimensional and multi-diverse community and society. And that includes you know, that communication going both ways and in all directions. I uh -huh. am a huge speaker and believer in the wisdom of all people, but also in the wisdom of the experience of living life. And I think it's entirely important for older people to have the confidence to share their stories. I understand that there is that ego barrier um, but I think that we need to reinstill, and I hope that we're going, you know, after this little kerfuffle of COVID, we will reinstill some of the wisdom that all people carry and some of the patience to be able to listen to mm -hmm. all people, whether it's in the experience of life or in the, hey, I have an intuitive knowing here which doesn't really come with an age, it comes with the soul and being in touch with the soul. I think in this time and age, not many people are very open to listening. And, and that's because why? 
I think we're a very media driven society. So we're only open to listening to those things that validate our beliefs mm -hmm. and make us feel good. So if anybody comes along and says, here's another way of looking at it, we immediately go into that defensive of why are you accusing me? Why are you criticizing yeah. me? That's fake news. You know, you're, you're giving me fake news. That's not, um, yeah, I, I'm, I don't yet, I don't see the road forward very well. And I felt like I used to be able to see it pretty clearly. Um, but I, I do think that the, uh, the our, we're called as individuals to work on ourselves. Mm -hmm. That's the first part of this reading um, in response to my statement to you about how hard it is when you get older. The first, you know, the first part of the reading says, you know, if you're really practicing the Tao, you're letting go constantly. And part of letting go is, for, is in this instance, of needing to be a source of wisdom, of wanting to be a source of wisdom, that you are, uh, whether or not people are going to listen to it. I think that's it, accepting that it's almost like a paradox. And I have been sitting with this, you know, duality, non-duality thing. Um, and there's a lot of, there's so much out there. Mm -hmm. You can literally like put your finger up and be like, this is what I'm interested in today and it lands. Um, and I think in that, that non-duality, in that letting go of there's a right or there's a wrong, or I'm either being listened to or I'm irrelevant, it, it still comes down to the self, which brings us to that next duality of selfish ego and self-love. The idea that you kind of start accepting that regardless of whether people listen to you or not, you are still wise. Accepting your own wisdom to create the path for your life. And, and, and if you have a means of sharing it, continue to share it continue without share it. the expectation uh, that you're going to get a lot of likes or a lot of readers or a lot of standing ovations or whatever, you know, uh, share it in whatever way you can without forcing it. Without right. forcing it. And I have found, you know, I, I've seen sort of a shift where I know that there's a lot of algorithms out there from a techno technology perspective when you share things on social media. <clears throat> but I found that more and more people are becoming more comfortable with private messages. And they may not even like something, but they'll send me a private message saying this was important or I'm glad you said this or it resonated mm -hmm. with me. And it's also an ego thing, I think, to accept that if one person, just one person can benefit from your wisdom, it's a good day. Mm -hmm. It's a good day. And I think we're so. Yeah, I, I, I. Yeah, Go ahead, please. I was going to say, I feel like we're so busy looking outside and looking for those likes and those comments and that instant validation that we're not open anymore to the smiles and the people offering to listen because we're no longer tuned into that kind of communication style. Haley, do you feel pressure um, to be on TikTok or other medias? Absolutely. You do, you feel Absolutely. that pressure? Absolutely. And There's would you not talk, about, talk about that? Would you, why, why do you feel pressure to be on TikTok? Um, to be on, TikTok right now is a huge, is that social media platform. Mm -hmm. Before TikTok, it was Snapchat. Before Snapchat, it was Instagram. Before Instagram, it was Facebook. Um, 
the pressure I feel is from the outside where they say, this is what everybody else is doing. This is the only way for you to be successful because look how these people have been successful. Mm -hmm. Those people, A, typically have no idea what they're talking about. <laughs> Mm -hmm. They don't understand <clears throat> how the systems work. Excuse me. <clears throat> they don't understand. <clears throat> All Take right. another one. They don't understand how these systems work and how much goes into creating a successful account. Um, in order to be successful on social media, you need to be on social media most of the day. You need mm -hmm. to be putting on social content, go, 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 go. You need to be interacting with content most of the day. Mm -hmm. That to me is not the way that I choose to live. It's also not the way I teach. I encourage all of my clients to take social media breaks, to limit their time on social media. So for me, being a, you know, expecting social media to be a driver of my success is a complete contradiction to who I am and what I teach. Do you feel a contradiction? I mean, are you on TikTok? I'm not on TikTok. I'm on Instagram. Uh -huh. um, and I post on Instagram. I have a, th you know, I had a bit of a tussle with a few people that were like, you're never going to be successful until you get on social media. Look at Jay Shetty, look at all these people. And I'm like, I'm not those people. I don't want to have an Instagram world. I want people to, you know, as you say, to listen to me, to resonate with me. So I changed my Instagram to consciously sharing. I will only share on Instagram if I've actually thought about it. And I feel like it represents everything that I am. So I share on Instagram randomly. There is no schedule. There is no expectation um, of, is anybody going to like this? Is it even going to get out there? Because the way that I use the system is against everything that the system is built for. I fall, I'm so far in the algorithms that even if I put out an amazing post that I think is just a masterpiece, Mm -hmm. never going to get picked up because I don't use the um, platform enough. Um, I also, you know, patience is a big thing there, you know, like we're all so caught up in instant gratification and wanting to see results right now, mm -hmm. you know, overnight successes are so cool and that's how you know you've made it. Mm -hmm. Overnight success is not an overnight success. Mm -hmm. It's years in the building. It's a path. And it does switch overnight, but just because you go from one day to the next day and things have changed doesn't negate all of the work that you've done. And I think it speaks to the beginning of the DAO that you read this morning. You know, you're constantly on this process of learning and upgrading and letting go of things, but you can't ignore the path. You can't ignore the longevity and the cycle of it. So oh, coming full circle, um, the patience that you talked about uh, in gardening. It, as I age, I you know you you read the little tag that says, you know, plant this eleven inches apart, right? And when I was younger, I think, oh, no, I want instant. <laughs> These guys are going to be right on top of each other. So it looks like an English garden. Right. right. <laughs> it's just one thing. So you get the instant gratification, but the plants die because they're too crowded. Mm -hmm. Right. So long term, uh, it's not going to be what you had envisioned. You know, as I've gotten older, I've learned that even if I don't properly read the, the card or pay attention to it, I know that I need to leave space. And I also know that I, uh, I have to be patient to imagine that, you know, what this garden is going to ultimately look like, you know, come spring or come two years from now spring or, 
you know, when, when those trees get larger, this is what the effect's gonna be. But you have to be patient. You have to be patient and be open to the beauty that happens in that evolution of your garden. You get yes. to see it sprouting, you get to see it growing, you know, that path all the way to the outcome of this wonderful bloom. There's such joy in that. Mm -hmm. Friends just came back from Canada and, uh, you know, they said they went to Canada from Florida a couple months early, earlier than they've ever gone before. And though they had to deal with more bugs because of spring, they also got the treat of watching trees and bushes bud out, you know, and there's a yeah. color, there's a colored green that's there that you never see again the rest of this of the year. It's so fresh and clean and new and um, and so you 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 know you open yourself up to that. I'm not water skiing; it's too cold. But I'm walking in the woods, and I'm seeing this incredible. Um, transformation take place in front of me but, and it reminds you that the world will continue after you oh. and I think you know again going back to your passage that's the learning that's the change in perception you could very well choose to sit there and be like oh it's too cold to water ski this sucks now I just have to suck it up until next spring or next summer or you can choose to be present what's around you and yeah. that's the learning which is so important to be able to, you know, also take stock of that path of progress to realize that, wow, three months ago, I would have been really anxious or agitated by this. Look at me now, I'm relaxing into it. It may not be perfect. It may still mm -hmm. be like a little bit of agitation, but you can see the progress and you celebrate mm -hmm. just each little bit of progress that you're making. Um, that I think that's what it means to be present and that's what it means to learn. It, for me, it means be quiet, you know, uh, and listen, you know, try to be aware of what's happening in this moment, whether you're in the woods or the kitchen or making the bed or in the shower, you know, what's happening right this moment? And are you happy in this moment? And then if you're not happy, what's wrong with this moment? You know? I, you, you know, I don't think either one of our, we can easily say that our paths were not easy. There were definitely difficult moments in it. Mm -hmm. But, you know, when you talk about that overnight success, you know, coming to a place where you can be quiet and be still and be present with the moment, and ask, am I happy? I think that's like one of the greatest gifts of life. And that's one of the greatest things about being on this path. You know, that is to me is the overnight success. That's everything that I think is worth it is to be able to sit there and be like, am I happy? Yeah, I am. And if I'm not happy, what am I not happy about? And I find myself, you know, every time I ask that, if, what am I not happy about? I immediately follow that with, is it true? And I find that most of the things I'm not happy about, not true. Mm. It's a story that my mind is making up and get worrying about the future or something that didn't even happen, but just be like, this could have been a way it could have gone. <laughs> mm. uh, I, um, I think some of that really is only available to you as you, or, or the de deeper levels of it are available to you as you age, but it's, but aging isn't a guarantee that you're going to experience it. Mm -hmm. And one, one of the things that, um, you know, I know that my belief in a higher power for some people is silly. You know, they just think you're talking to an imaginary person there's no such thing. You die, you die. It's over. And, you know, they may be right. You know, there, a lot of this could just be fantasy stories, things we are making up. But the, the, re, the, the end result, though, is the same, is that, you know, my brother wrote recently about, you know, he didn't believe in heaven or hell. This is heaven at this moment. And 
I believe that. I believe this is heaven too, but I but and but I do believe there's something else. But it doesn't matter whether or not there is it or isn't, because of my spiritual practice, I've gotten to a point in my life emotionally, physically, spiritually, where they're coming together in a way that makes sense. You know? mm -hmm. The pieces are all starting to fit together. Yeah, whether or not whether or not you know. When I die, I'll I'll meet a Saint Francis of Assisi and say, "Oh, you know, I used to read the oh, prayer." Hey. <laughs> hey, high fives, Francis! I loved your prayer. I didn't write it. I didn't matter. If people gave you credit for it. <laughs> <laughs> well, it doesn't matter whether or not that happens. You know what? What matters is is that my reading of the prayer, Francis, prepares me for the day, and I like who I am better because I am trying to follow the guidance of the prayer you know that it's in giving that we receive it's in pardoning that we are pardoned i you you raise a very interesting thing there i like it because it makes me feel better like it makes me feel like i'm being a better person yeah it's an entirely selfish egotistical oh. statement and I wanted to highlight that because I think it's so important that we realize how important the ego is in being better people, mm -hmm. in creating a better world. We need our ego. We need that part of us that drives us and says we can be better. Yes, in our ego, and we're, I think we're constantly working on our ego. You know, uh, I think the soul and the ego are in this, this dance. And, and we're, we, we are, you know, I don't have the same ego I did when I was 14. You know, that it, it has changed enormously. My soul is more sophisticated uh, than it was when I was 14. But the messages are, are still the same. You know, be a good person, mm -hmm. Brian. Be a good person. You know, open that door. Give that seat up. Don't honk. Um, say hello, ask how they're doing. I've, I've had that voice since, since I was little. And, um, and, and I embrace it, you know, whether or not it's my imagination, whether or not there is anything beyond me, it, I have felt it and that's enough for me. It, you know, that voice that says, do this anyway you know coming back to what you're talking about you know the elders with so much wisdom and nobody listening to their word the word is so important the word is you know the whether or not you believe in god but the word is the breath of the soul and when we believe that nobody's listening to us when we are looking outside for somebody to validate us, I question how much power we have in our word. How much of our word is our truth, is the truth? Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Because I do think, and I am seeing as I question this this week, that the more that we are in that space of, I don't know why, but I just, you know, I keep hearing this thing that says, be better, do better, you can be more, you can be better, go for it, is what fuels up my word to regardless of who's listening, regardless of who's giving me likes or, you know, sending me emails saying that really touched me, I'm still speaking my word. It's consistent, it's true, yeah. and it's love. It represents everything that I want to be a part of. Yeah, you have to, and that takes training. Mm -hmm. You know, it takes training um, not to come on and join our conversation with the sole intention of selling your book, right? That takes training to say, this, I like these people. I've got an hour to share. Doesn't matter what it affects. This is where I want to be, right? Yeah. And I'm and open it, to whatever it's going to be. I'm open to whatever it's going to be. And but and so I uh, really want to affirm what you said that you know are we good at our word because we can say this and then when our book is ready to go out suddenly 
we fall back into old patterns. Now, how many people are going to read this book? Am I going to get reviews? I've got to ask people to write into Amazon and give a review. I'm supposed to be doing five things a day. So suddenly, even after you've you know, spent many years talking about you know, success or failure, which is more dangerous, the Dow asked that yesterday or the day before, you know, success or failure, which is more dangerous? Um, well, success can be because you can lose yourself in it, right? And uh, it's like going back to the title of the, of, the, of the podcast. Now, are you happy without the movie? When you publish the book, right? Are you, are, are you happy that it's just published? Mm -hmm. Or does how many copies have to sell before you feel like it was worth your while? And I think you can get caught up in that thing of what do I need to say or what do I need to do to get people to notice me, to believe me? Bingo. Exactly right. That's that's exactly right, Haley. You know, for instance, if I decided that I wanted to plunge into the TikTok world, which is another generation entirely, <laughs> right? Uh, really is. Well, what would I need to say or do to get their attention, right? And so suddenly uh, you're willing to leave behind the people that have started to follow you, right? You're willing to leave them behind because you wanna change the message so that younger people who are spending more money than they are, you know, uh, and are more into likes or whatever, um, so that they'll like me, right? So, you know, we have to constantly ask ourselves the question, you know, what is my truth? What am I willing, you know, what, what, what price am I putting on this? Mm -hmm. What am I giving up? Am I being, you know, authentic? Am I being authentic? And I think, you know, not only do you leave those people that have been following you behind, you leave yourself behind. You do. You're no longer... Um, being who you're trying to show everybody who you are. <laughs> mm -hmm. And it's, I wanted to segue a little bit into the crushing disappointment <laughs> that I feel when I um, see people that seem to have it together, like seem to be saying the right thing on the outside, they look like they're doing the right thing. And then you give them a little bit of space to show them where they, who they are at that point in time and they show you and you're just like, mm -hmm. you're not what you speak. Mm -hmm. And I was wondering if you felt that crushing disappointment ever. Um, yes, uh, yes. It, it, discovering people's um, clay feet is, it, you know. Oh, that's a good one. Okay. Yeah, that, that's a tough one because you really wanted them to stay where they were up on that pedestal because it gave you a sense of, it was a beacon of light. On the other hand, them showing you their humanness is their gift to you. Absolutely. Because it, it gives you permission to be human too. And it gives you permission to put that, you know, wonderful boundary in place saying, this is not what I do. This is not what I want to be. But I, at the same time, still allow you with compassion to carry on. Uh huh. Right. You no, know, I don't have the right to get angry at you or tell you. You know, as we were speaking about the beginning, right. you you've read doing it. You've read their book, maybe. You know, and you feel you really know them from reading yes. their book, and what they said really touched your soul. And then you meet them and you think, oh, that didn't come through in the book. <laughs> <laughs> you left the chapter out. Yeah. 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 It's, uh, you know, and I find that a lot in my days where, and especially now, I think, you know, coming back to this COVID world that we're in, we're getting to see the humanness of people so much deep now. And it's raw. And it is, you know, having to be able to be like, oh, I didn't know that was you. <laughs> mm -hmm. I haven't seen that part of you before. And, and, and ask, asking yourself also, Haley, you know, why are people interested in me? I mean, women have had this, you know, for a question for a long, long time. You know, are you talking to me because you're a nice guy? And 
or are you wanting to get me in bed? And, and I, I've had the same disappointments in my life where, you know, I met somebody who I was so excited, wanted to spend time with me because intellectually, emotionally, spiritually, I was connecting with them, but that's not what they had in mind. You know, I was a young, cute thing and they wanted to, you know, and I, and I was so surprised. <laughs> I, I went over my head, you know, until later. And I thought, oh, wait a second, you know, that's what this was about. Yeah, uh, I actually encountered that <laughs> this last week or so, where um, I was reminded that what people see first is the physical. And it is because of the physical that they then become interested in potentially the non-physical, the intellectual side. Mm -hmm. um, and it was suggested, recommended, that I own my physicality just as much as I own my mental. And I thought that was a really good point. And I took that on. I was like, you know what? Really solid point. Like my physical body is just as amazing and beautiful and worth all of the attention it gets as my mind, as my heart. But, you know, there's such an interesting line there where it's like, okay, I'm gonna own that. Are you open to seeing all of me and not just being stuck on the physical? Yeah, and, and the problem, yes. Yeah, I would say that if, if you have beauty, don't hide it, right? But also I would caution people not to spend too much time on it. Right. Because time is limited. <clears throat> and every minute I spend combing my hair, I'm not spending doing something else. Right. And so if I spend an hour, you know, doing makeup and hair and so that when I go out, I'm, I hope to get this attention. Well, is that the attention you want? Or are you putting yourself out there with all of this work? And then disappointed that the person doesn't want to talk about, you know, the soul. Wait a second. You, you, you put a worm on this hook. You know, you you know that's a very appropriate point that you're saying. And I think what we miss so often is do you have an intention of why you look the way you look? And in terms of, I'm talking about very specifically the clothes that you're wearing. Um, the makeup that you're putting on if you're a woman or a guy like do you have an intention for the way that you are presenting your physical self to the world and what are what are the possible intentions I think how many people actually stop and have that moment when they're putting on their makeup to say this is my intention today I want to look like this because this is what I want to put out into the world mm -hmm. I I can speak from my experience and the woman that I've been around. Pretty much all the time that we're putting on makeup, we're doing it to look beautiful, to get the attention of somebody. Right. And I think it's, you know, we have to take responsibility and accountability that, okay, you might not have received the kind of attention that you wanted, but it's really on you to clean up your intention to start ensuring that you're getting the attention that you want. Right. versus attention um, right. and I feel like we've again got very clouded there where you can't question anybody about their in intention because it's the attention that matters the attention versus intention yeah attention versus intention for me they're not yeah. you know black and white they go together that's one of the freeing things that uh, uh, has been uh, with COVID. I read a piece this morning about how women across the globe are letting their hair go gray. And some and of them look so beautiful. My friend, oh, and she looks look amazing. Incredible. I say to them, let it go. No, no, no. Come on, do it. You'll be beautiful. I swear to God. And I say, well, my hair doesn't look like your hair. Well, your hair is going to be beautiful. And they let it go gray and they love it. They love it because they don't have to fuss. It's the real them. Yes. Right. A lot of money that goes into coloring hair, my friend. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And well, a lot I, of time, you know? Yeah, yeah. I, um, I, I don't envy that. You know, I don't envy that. I used to, when I lived in New York, color my hair and do my nails. Um, very um, 
part of that world. And I used to have to prepare myself to go and get my nails done because I was just like, I can't sit here for an hour and a half while somebody does my nails and I have to wait for them to dry. And then even after I dry, I have to be really careful. And it's the same thing with the hair. I can't sit in the same place for three hours. Uh Now that I'm out of that world and (laughs) people look at me and they're like, oh, you should color your hair. And I'm like, no, I'm actually trying to figure out what my hair does without all of that coloring. And honestly, I can't sit in that chair that long anymore. Mm -hmm. And it's not an ADD thing. It's just a, there's so much more I could be doing with my time. Uh There's so much more that I could be doing with my time. And I've also found too, like when people realize that my hair now isn't colored, they're just like, you should never color your hair. The way that the sun changes it is amazing. I'm like, yeah, kind of liking it. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good. That's great. Well, so, you know, going back to just the whole idea of what, uh, creating the package with intention of knowing all right why you know why what why am i doing what i'm doing why am i spending time on this what is it the response that i hope to get and when i get that response uh am i grateful for it or resentful for it you know you spend a lot of time preparing yourself to find be found attractive somebody finds you attractive which in their mind is is physical but you know in, in your mind well yeah but we're, then we were supposed to talk about Kierkegaard and you know <laughs> Kierkegaard and you know you're not doing that you're talking about my tits <laughs> or at least you're staring at them and you know a lot of that it's so complex and so interconnected because, you know, without that intention, without, without an understanding of yourself and your entire history, your past, you, I, I think it's incredibly difficult to understand and be able to process the attention that you're getting. Because I think a lot of the time, our idea of what is healthy and attention is misguided. And it's based on what we were raised is healthy attention. So an example of this for me, I went through a pattern of attracting more of the narcissistic playboy kind of guy. Um, I actually dated like six people in a row like this. And I was just like, this has to stop. And what I realized was that even though I had the intention of meeting a really good guy and I went out there with like, I intend to meet a more stable, more um, less ego-driven guy. Mm -hmm. I was still meeting the same guy because that's my idea of attention. That's my idea of somebody finding me attractive and somebody wanting to love me is that be a narcissist. That's what I'm used to. Mm -hmm. And where I put myself, where I, you know, Mm -hmm. it's not that you're going to sit at home after all this work you've done on yourself so where do you go to get the attention well you you're not going to a lecture to get the attention (laughs) (laughs) you're not going to the library (laughs) although random stuff does happen it does Um, random stuff does happen but that's not what you're thinking yeah and i think it's you know in being able to slow down and to relearn to let go and learn new things you get to see how powerful you are how much you can impact the kind of attention that you get the kind of treatment that you receive and how then you are able to design what's ahead of you and i think that's the wisdom Mm -hmm. you 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 uh you know if you go into a place no matter what it is with the with a a reasonable um, hope. For instance, you know, I've I've used this example before, but people will say, well, I go into a bar and I'm invisible. You know, gay men over 40 say I'm invisible. Well, you're going into the bar hoping to be seen and that makes you feel invisible. But if you're going into the bar to meet some friends, you're not paying any attention to what the 20 year olds are looking at, right? 
they're not looking at you. If you want them to look at you, you can work on that, but you're going to set yourself up for disappointment. And you're going to set yourself, yeah, you know, that disappointment is you're setting yourself up for a specific person that is out looking for that. Yeah, yeah. So if you go out there and you talk about your money and you, you know, are buying drinks and you, you know, so you find somebody who's attracted to you and, uh, and you, you know, you, you hook up with them, and, but you look at other couples and say, God, you know, they share much more. They talk yeah. deeper levels. But that's not what you went fishing for. You weren't fishing that's not for the that. Pool that you were in. <laughs> no, no, you went well, fishing lake. elsewhere. Yeah. So, you were the, in the, wrong so the one, <laughs> the one you caught, you know, you caught because that's what you put out. I, I use an analogy: if you don't want salmon, don't go, don't go fishing in a salmon river. <laughs> Say that again. If you if you, if don't, you don't want, want salmon, or if you don't, don't want. Salmon, don't go fishing in a salmon river. Right, because you're going to get salmon. Going to get salmon. Yeah. Figure out where else to go. Yeah, and I mean, there's, again, you know, coming back to the diversity and the multi-dimensional community that I hope that we're starting to open up into and starting to create at that foundational level. That's where we find all of that. There's always more than one river. There's always more than one lake to go mm -hmm. and fish in but mm -hmm. you also have to do the work to be able to figure out how to navigate to that other place mm -hmm. and there were yeah. books like the Tao <laughs> that kind of give you these hints along the way yeah if you if you're looking for somebody who shares your interest in spirituality go to places where people are talking about it right and I think also go, go to places, and I know that we're in COVID now, so going to places is opening up. Um, but also, you know, have that intention to, you know, before you leave the door, be fully present with what it is that you're wanting to put out there. Be responsible for your energy. Mm -hmm. If you're not feeling your best and you really don't want to go out, maybe stay at home. <laughs> Uh, knowing what your intention is, is really a, uh, a challenge. And it's something that becomes easier as you get older. But, you know, when I was a kid, um, high school, at, at, with an older sister, and, you know, oh, you can't wear that, you, you know, you can't, you know, that looks good on you, this doesn't look. So my intention w was to uh, attract girls, but I didn't want that, you know. <laughs> I didn't want their attention because then what, what do I do once I get it? Yeah. I just, I screw, screw them up because they think, oh my God, you know, he just, he doesn't even want to kiss. Which I think, you know, intention, attention, power of the word. Mm -hmm. You know, you're asking, you're putting the words out saying, this is what I want without knowing what you want and you receive it and you're like, not what I want. It's not what I want, but I'm afraid to say what I want. And you're afraid to say, and so, you know, a lot of the time too, when we receive what we don't want, we receive it with a very agitated energy where we either throw it back, we get angry, we get fearful, and it's just a mess. Very complex being a human. Yeah. <laughs> we are. And I, you know, I think I love, I love talking about it and thinking about it because it helps us you know, refine, you know, people will say, you know, that was really helpful. I, I had a friend who said she listened to our, our uh, program on crying. Uh, a lot of people actually did. A lot uh, of they, people enjoyed that. And yeah, again, were, no likes, nothing on social media. I, yeah. It's been that very, you know, personal touch of, I want to let you know personally that I like this. Mm -hmm. Well, they, they, it's funny how people see, um, you know, you acknowledging that you cry is something, oh, this is going to be new. Let's find out what this is about, which I'm, I'm glad for. But I think, you know, to, uh, going back to the complex humans that we are and learning and rejoicing, you know, being grateful um, 
my friend uh, yesterday also said that one of the sermons that she heard uh, that meant a lot to her recently was about Easter Sunday and uh, the statement that more will be revealed to you, right? Absolutely. Well, that's what, that, that's what we're going through right now, you know, is discernment. We're discerning. We're trying to discern, okay, what okay. is it? And it's that continual cycle of, you know, this wonderful passage that you read that is so appropriate is that, you know, as you're learning, you release some of the doubt because it is that discernment. It is that, be, you know, more is being revealed. Mm -hmm. Open up to receive it. Let what no longer serves you go. Right. And a lot of that is traditional religious dogmas and rituals. I mean, rituals are great as long as you don't um, attach you know, meaning to it that it doesn't make any sense to you. It like Ray and I, bigger than what you're trying to do. Ray and I burn incense and in a candle every morning in honor of somebody that we care about, living or dead. And it's a ritual that we picked up, you know, growing up Catholic. The smell of incense, the sight of candle. Uh, so you can continue uh, a a ritual uh, and give it new meaning, you know, for you. But what the Tao talked about, I think, in letting go is letting go of beliefs that don't serve you anymore. Mm -hmm. Right? Beliefs, people. Beliefs and people. And I've had people let go of me because, yeah. you know, I didn't meet their needs anymore or I wasn't, you know, I, I wasn't what they thought I was or what yeah. they thought I was. So. Boundaries. Maybe we'll have to have a chat about boundaries because I know we're out of time today, but I think if we have a chat about boundaries, that would be a good one. I don't yeah. know if we've addressed boundaries like completely. They've been bits and parts of other conversations. Yeah, let's let's but do I that. Think our journey with boundaries would be a good share. Yeah, and, and the and, evolution of what boundaries initially meant to where they are now. That's a good, that's good. And you know, time is a boundary. It is. <laughs> we've We've run against ours. <laughs> just for this week yeah. and just for today. <laughs> All right. Lots thank of love, my dear Brian. We will chat soon. Yes, thanks, dear. Bye. Take care. Love you. Bye-bye. Love you too. Bye.